evening, everybody. I, I think we're in for a very special treat, but you know, I like to start these meetings by finding out something about the people that are here. So I'm going to uh, address a question to the men in the room. How many of you men are wearing boots tonight? Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, now let's check how many women are wearing boots tonight. Holy mackerel. They, 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 they've got us beat, guys. We've got, we got to do better. Anyway, today, today is a, tonight is a very unusual night because uh, uh, we're, in, we're looking at an art form that uh, I don't remember that we've ever really looked at together before. Uh, but uh, those of us who live in Tucson and live in the West period know that boots are part of our culture. And uh, our speaker tonight has a long history, a family history of working with leather and boots and chaps and saddles and all kinds of things. And she is a cowgirl uh, herself, has just moved to Benson from Nevada. And so uh, I'd like to ask you to give a warm Friends of Western Art welcome to <laughs> Kelly Martin. Hippopotamus. 
Who knew, right? <laughs> or you want elephant, which this pair that we're going to work on tonight is elephant. Or you want anteater. Who knew, right? Or shark skin. Or just an old bull hide or a wax calf or, you know. And these, these lighter colors are what I use for aligning. So they're not really too exciting. But I just want to pass these around. They are, I think, that one's going to fall off, but I think they're all marked on the back what they are. And then the other cool part is then you get to, oh, or alligator. So one of my favorite parts, like I said, is the design. So you pick your piece of what you want for the vamp, which is the bottom part of the boot. So you pick that color and you decide that you want that. So say you want this and you just love, I don't know, lime green. So you can lay those together and actually see what you're going to like go together. And these are kid skin, the tops. I like to use a kid skin or a kangaroo because it's easy to work with and it holds its color well and its shape. These are going to a cowboy guy. So these are calf skin, they're a little firmer in the top because he's going to work it. So, here's some pass them samples. I think everything is Okay. Oh, and depending on what kind of shark you get, which, don't ask me the names of these because I don't think I can tell you, but what you'll notice that the grain and the leather, one is rougher and one is a little bit smoother. And have kind of a cool story I like to tell about shark is a long time ago, before all of us were here, um, they would dry shark when they when they harvested a shark they would dry it and they would actually use this for sandpaper. It was like their the very first the very first sandpaper. So there's two different kinds of shark there. And then when you go. This is a pretty short and sweet version of making a boot. I'm making it a little bit simpler. But, um, so the first thing that you'll do after you get all their measurements done and everything is put the insole on. This piece that I'm going to uncover here is um, actually the part that your foot sits on in the boot. They made me promise not to get nails all over the floor. <laughs> So you get this piece wet, and then you soak it, and then you shape it, and, um, oh, I want the nail, I'm in trouble now, and then you let that dry, and it shapes to this last, which will be the shape of the bottom of your foot, so we'll pass that around. Then, before you get to the, well, obviously you have to cut out all the tops and stitch the tops and cut all your parts and shape your parts, but this is the insole that's ready to be turned into a boot. I have a groove cut in here. This groove will sew this part of the boot, which is the welt, which will sew to the sole and actually it holds the whole boot together from the vamp. To the inside. I'm gonna get on the dictionary in a minute. They got me a dictionary, so <laughs> I can be taller and more knowledgeable. Um, <laughs> but I'm not gonna pass this one around because we're gonna build a boot on this one because this belongs to my um, other guy, Gary, here. And I like to call Gary my repeat offender. This will be like his sixth pair. He's a, he's a rancher from Idaho and he he has wore out some boots, so, um, well, this is, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm trying to do short and sweet. This is a boot that's lasted. So this boot, are you not seeing me down here? Sorry, I should move around. I'm going to pass step though. Um, this boot is lasted, and you guys can see that groove I was talking about. When I pass this around, be careful because there's nails. Anybody stabs theirself, where's Bob? He got you. He take your case. <laughs> but, um, and another thing that I do that a lot of people don't do is I only use brass nails on the inside of my boots. 
Why, you ask? Someone. Amen. It does not rust. When you put iron in here and your foot sweats or they get wet and dry from outside, iron will rust. And it will actually make a hole inside your insole and that's when boots tend to fall apart. So, um, brass is very important on the inside of a boot. And then, have you ever had those holes in your sock where you, you know you're wearing your boot and you get those are iron nails <laughs> in there? getting in your boot, but I also, anything that goes on the inside is, go ahead. Why would anybody use iron then? Because it's cheaper. It's cheaper. Okay, got it. Why do, why do boot companies use paper, cardboard insoles and celastic? A lot of boot companies, factory boot companies today, use the same thing for a heel, a hard heel counter, that I use for what we're going to call the toe box which the toe box is, is a, a material called celastic, and you actually soak it in a chemical, and then when it dries, it, it gets very hard. So you know the edge of the toe um, when you have your, your toe box. It's hard. So the material in there is celastic. This is a shark skin boot, by the way, if you would like to feel that, how hard that got. So how about wooden pegs? I don't pick. I use brass because my theory is, and my dad was the same way and I learned from him, but especially in the desert. See, I did grow up in Arizona. I grew up just outside of Wickenburg. So pegs are like rawhide. They're wooden and they always, no matter if there's humidity, they'll swell. If it's dry, they shrink. So they're always swelling and shrinking, and they're never, they're never set. They're, there's always something moving about them, and so they will fall out. Whereas when I put the sole on this boot, there's brass nails all the way through, and they go clear into the insole and clinch. And so these babies aren't going anywhere. So I'll pass these around. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm missing you over here. You're just trying to trick me, huh? <laughs> that one has last in it, so it is kind of heavy. We'll, we'll show and tell some more stuff. Um, so this is a pair that's, that's just been, do you want to take one of those on? Um, like I said, these have nails, please be careful. This is a wax fringe calf, which is one of my favorite leathers for my cowboy guys because it doesn't take a lot of TLC. It's oil infused in the in the tannage and so it, it really holds up to a lot of abuse that they, they give without a lot of um, extra care because those... What, what do you call it? Wax French calf on those. Which ones, ma'am? Yeah, the one we were just talking Yes, that's a... Oh. I thought I had another one, but I don't. I do have, I built these for a contest in Las Vegas, which I'm kind of proud of these. I built them in my husband's size, but um, at the NFR several years ago, these won the People's Choice, which was very, that's a very prestigious thing because we don't care if other, other judges like them or not. <laughs> People like them. So if you'll notice on these boots, this is a gator. They have 3D roses, and every card suit is layered differently all the way around. So everyone changes all the way around, and the pull holes are the card suits, all four of them. If you notice on the collar, they all change. There's a lot of detail in this boot. Thank you. Thank you. Like that. Yeah. I try to do a lot of one of a kind. I don't want my boots to look like anybody else's boots. I want them to look like mine. And so, like I said, I really fell in love with the design. I really, I really love the design. That's this pair. I call these are my just because boots. Just because another boot maker told me I couldn't do that. <laughs> so I told him, yes, I can. So the cactus on here is an overlay, but it's a raised overlay 
that is covered, and the the leather that covers the cactus is actually frog skin. Yeah, and then these um, these little flowers are three D, and they're actually inlaid into the cactus. So it's an overlay with a three D inlay. These were just becomes, and these were really fun to make. Uh, well, finish your work. That, my dad was big on finish work. He said, take enough pride in what you do to finish your work. And I think that it's very important. Nothing leaves. If I put a pair of yoke caps on a pair of boots, they leave polished. There's, you take some pride in what you do and absolutely finish your work. and I took him to the show, but I didn't let him wear them until after work. So, yeah. Well, I have a hard time because when I finish a customer boot, they want me to send them to him. So I don't usually have a lot of boots just hanging around that are finished. That's why you're getting various stages of done here. But we are going to build Gary's other boot is what we're going to do here. This is elephant. If you, do you guys want to build the elephant? Yes. Everybody, look at you guys. It's like show and tell is so cool. I love it. Yeah. Because I am a very, very touchy feeling. Yes, ma'am. The insole. No, I do this part. Okay, and then I take that off. Yep, it's, if you notice, it's nailed. And so I have to take this off and I have to grind it. And see, there's three different angles on this because when I last the boot and when I weld the boot, the, the stitch goes in right here and you turn your awl and it comes right up in this groove. And so there's a reason that everything's like this. And then the shank will lay here, which the shank is this part, the hard piece in the middle. Yeah, and then you want this to be, have be a different angle so if that heel cups over when we last it. And you'll notice when I do last these, there's lines on here and they're there for a reason where different things happen. And I've been at this for, I've been building boots for 30 years and I still, I still use my marks because I think it's important that we get everything in the right spot. Yeah. So, yes. Repeat the okay, question, Kelly. That is, how does, she asked me how the inside <laughs> got finished, and that's a great question. So I stitch it together, and it's a blind stitch, and you'll see when we last this boot here in just a minute. I, I can show you more of that. But you stitch it together, and then I have a tool that I edge it with, and then I take it to my sander, and I finish it. But before we, when we turn it right side out, we're going to, crap out of it with a hammer because I don't want well I want that very smooth and finished because we don't want it to eat your leg we don't want it yes yes and if someone has a problem if we have a diabetic or if we have other things we talk about that and I can adjust for that because we can put a cover over it or but that has to be done in a whole nother process so but yeah um they're You've had those that eat on your ankle or they make sores on the inside of your legs. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Except Band-Aid companies. Band-Aid companies want you to have sores on your legs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kelly, you said yeah. you've been doing it for 30 years. Uh -huh. has, uh, uh, has much changed in your way you do this or the technology or new materials? Has anything changed? In those 30 years? Um, yeah, some, like the tannage on like the shark skin, because back when I very first started, shark tended to be what I call boardy, which is kind of very hard and firm and hard to work with leather. And they've got the tannage down where it's a lot more malleable and easier to use. Um, but technology wise, no, it's still all, it's still all done by hand. There's, there's only a few um, machines that you use. I have 
have some sewing machines and I have a finishing line which has different sandpapers on it, different smoothness, so I can do different parts like when I grind the hill block or I or do the side seams, for instance, or you know, like when I grind this down because this cuts flat and then I have to shape it so it fits back on there. And if you notice, it fits that perfectly because you don't want any bumps in here because if there's, if this isn't smooth, when you put the rest of this on, all you do is increase a bump. So then you have this bump inside of there and when you stand it puts pressure on your foot because we don't want that. We want to make sure that everything is smooth and finished and clean and, and that they fit well and they feel well. 